Hello and welcome to today's lesson on the motor effect, which is part of the, the magnetism and electromagnetism topic in GCSE separate science physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to calculate the magnitude of a magnetic force on a current carrying wire. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson, we should be able to describe the principles of electromagnetism, describe the effects of the motor effect and calculate the magnitude of magnetic force on a current carrying wire, which falls into the following part of the AQA GCSE separate science specification 4.7.2.2 Fleming's left hand rule in 4.7.2.3 electric motors. So when a current carrying a, uh, when a conductor carrying a current is placed in a magnetic field, the magnet producing the field and the conductor exert a force on each other. Now this force is caused by the conductor cutting across the magnetic field of the permanent magnet. So it's therefore caused by the magnetic field field of the electromagnet and the magnetic field of the permanent magnet interacting with each other. Now this force is a non-contact magnetic force and the direction of this magnetic force can be determined by Fleming's left hand rule. Now if we look at the following situation in front of us on the screen, if we use Fleming's left hand rule, we can work out that the direction of the magnetic force must be acting out of the board or the screen. Now the maximum magnetic force is caused when the the magnetic field and the electrical current running through the electromagnet are at right angles to each other. Whilst there is no magnetic force produced when the magnetic field and electrical current are parallel to each other. Now a way to understand the magnitude of the magnetic force produced on the conductor is to consider the magnetic field lines of the permanent magnet. Now a magnetic force is produced on a conductor when the conductor cuts through the magnetic field lines of the permanent magnet. Now the greater the number of field lines cut by the conductor, the greater the magnetic force produced. Now, when a conductor is parallel to the magnetic field, there is no magnetic force exerted. This is because no magnetic fields are being cut by the conductor at this point. We say the conductor is straddling the field lines. Now, when a conductor is perpendicular to the magnetic field, there is a maximum force exerted. This is because the most field lines possible are being cut by the conductor at this point. So what factors affect the magnitude of the magnetic force produced between the interaction of the magnetic uh, field and the electrical field, the permanent magnet and the electromagnet. So to consider this, remember what we said earlier, the greater the number of field lines cut by the conductor, the greater the force produced. So the first factor that can affect this is the magnetic flux density or the magnetic field strength. The greater the number of field lines cut by the conductor, the greater the force produced. So if there's more field lines per unit area, there's going to be more field lines cut. The second idea is linked, sorry, this comes in the first idea still, is that this is linked into the strength of the permanent magnet. So what it's telling us is the stronger the permanent magnet, the greater its magnetic field strength, the greater the number of field lines cut by the conductor, the greater the magnetic force produced. Now the second factor is the length of the conductor in the magnetic field, because if you have a longer conductor there in the magnetic field, there's going to be more field lines cut by the conductor so therefore a greater force is produced and finally the greater the current through the conductor in the field the greater the number of field lines cut by the conductor the greater the force produced so what equation could we use to determine the magnitude of this magnetic force produced in the motor effect so when a conductor carrying a current is placed in the magnetic field the magnet producing the field and the conductor exert a force on each other and we call this the motor effect. Now for a conductor at right angles to a magnetic field and it's carrying a current, we can say that the magnetic force is equal to the magnetic flux density B times by the current through the wire I times by the length of the wire in the magnetic field L. Now in this example force is given in newtons, magnetic flux density is given in teslas, current is given in amps and length is given in meters. Now the term magnetic flux density, which is how close the field lines are together, can also be called the magnetic field strength. Now magnetic flux density is measured in tesla, named after the famous physicist Nikola Tesla, and it refers to how many magnetic field lines are found in one square meter. So in theory, a flux density of three teslas would mean that there are three 
three field lines found in one square meter once the field has become uniform. The lines don't spread out or they don't come together. Now this equation F equals B times by I times by L is only true if the magnetic field and the conductor are at right angles to each other. So this equation gives us the maximum possible magnetic force produced. Now if we actually wanted to write out the full equation which does consider the angle it would actually be F equals B I L sine theta where theta is the angle between the magnetic field and the conductor but this is actually A level physics. Now in physics we call this particular equation the Bill equation and and also in A-level physics, we'll learn the BEV equation, which is the magnetic force on an individual charged object or electron, most likely, in a conductor. Now, this Bill equation we use in GCSE physics is the general equation for a large conductor found on the scale of motors. Now, what we also know is the larger the magnetic force, the faster a motor spins. So this tells us the larger the current through the electromagnet, the larger the magnetic force, the faster the motor spins. The longer the length of the electromagnet in the magnetic field, the larger the magnetic force, the faster the motor spins, and the larger the magnetic flux density of the permanent magnet, the larger the magnetic force, the faster the motor spins. Now, if you wish to change the direction of the motor spin, you can do this by changing the direction of current flowing through the electromagnet, or you could do this by changing the direction of the magnetic field of the permanent magnet. Obviously, it's important if you do both of these at once, the two effects will cancel out and it will continue to move in the same original direction. Now, this equation F equals BIL is given to you in your examination book. You are not expected to memorize this equation, you're only expected to use this equation. Now, the magnetic force we've just calculated with that equation can have an interesting an effect if we place a current carrying conductor in a permanent magnetic field on a balance. Now if we think about this what we do is we place a permanent magnet on a balance and we have a conductor suspended inside of this permanent magnet. Now the interaction between the current carrying conductor and the permanent magnet can lead to a magnetic force being produced. So in this arrangement it's the permanent magnet not the conductor which is touching the balance. So in this arrangement it's the weight of the permanent magnet that's being measured by the balance and the magnetic force is the force produced on the conductor however it will also produce a force of equal size in the opposite direction on the permanent magnet now that comes from a rule in physics we've looked at previously called newton's third law of motion there are equal yet opposite forces on two objects interacting with each other so if we place a magnetic force on a conductor acting downwards what happens to this measured weight well, the magnetic force acting on the wire means that there's an opposite magnetic force acting on the magnet acting upwards. This acts in the opposite direction to the weight of the magnet, giving a lower value on the balance. Now, the conductor is not on the balance, so it's not being measured. It's only the permanent magnet that's being measured. So the balance is measuring a resultant force downwards, and because we've now got a force going upwards on the permanent magnet, this tells us that the resultant force downwards is going to appear to decrease slightly and if the balance was at a zero it would read a negative value. Now what would happen if we placed a magnetic force on the conductor acting upwards? What would happen to the measured weight on the balance? So the magnetic force acting on the wire means there's an opposite magnetic force on the magnet acting downwards. Now this acts in the same direction as the weight of the permanent magnet. And as the conductor is not on the balance, it's the permanent magnet that's on the balance and the balance is measuring the resultant force downwards, it will increase that resultant force downwards so it would appear that the weight of the object would increase slightly. So if the balance was zero, the balance would read a positive value. So what have we looked at in today's lesson? Well, when a current carrying, a, sorry, when a conductor carrying a current is placed in a magnetic field, the magnet producing the field and the conductor exert a force on each other. We call this the motor effect. And you should be able to use Le Fleming's left hand rule to represent the relative orientation of force, current, and the magnetic field. And you should be able to recall 
all the factors that affect the size of the force on a conductor and for a conductor at right angles to a magnetic field and carrying a current, force is equal to magnetic flux density times by current times by length where force is measured in newtons, magnetic flux density is measured in teslas, current is measured in amps and length is measured in meters and that a coil of wire carrying a current in a magnetic field tends to rotate which is the basis of an electrical motor and you can explain how the force on a conductor in a magnetic field causes the rotation of a coil in an electrical motor. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson we should be able to describe the principles of electromagnetism. We should be able to describe the effect of the motor effect and finally calculate the magnitude of the magnetic force on a current carrying wire. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on the motor effect which is part of the magnetism and electromagnetism topic in GCSE Separate Science Physics. Thank you very much for listening and have a lovely day.